Ladies, what are your tips on respecting your, quote, documentary subject, for lack of a better word, their environment? Especially, I mean, you were dealing with people or women giving birth and husbands being there. Well, what are some of your tips of coming in, respecting that environment, and at the same time, getting the footage that you need? Hmm. Good one. <laughs> Good question. We always, you know, try to be as unobtrusive as possible, which is obvious. Everybody knows that. But um, we just, I, I mean, I feel like we just tried to kind of stay in the background a lot, and especially in prenatal visits and stuff. But it's very hard when you have a camera. I mean, and somebody's having a prenatal visit or having a baby. I mean, you know, these women trusted us because the midwives trusted us. So we had been filming for quite some time and then we would be invited into these scenarios that are quite intimate. And that was because the midwives said that it was okay. And, and or the women felt so strongly about putting out this message about natural birth and that there's another way or, you know, intervention free birth, I should say, um, that, uh, you know, they, they, they really vouched for us. And so that's why we were able to be in a lot of those situations. I think, you know, we weren't the type of people who were like pressing and pressing and pressing. If somebody didn't want to talk about something, we just kind of let it go. And we try to revisit it at another time. Um, we, we just, I think that's not our personality to like, you know, if somebody's doing something that might be sort of sensationalistic, whatever it is and might be great on film like if it didn't feel right we wouldn't we wouldn't film it or include it and I think we both just kind of see things like that we feel like these people are trusting us and we need to be respectful well, it's of like that. A, yeah and it's a, and it's a uh, it, it sort of depends on how you think about the art of documentary filmmaking or what the role of the filmmaker is it's like if you're telling someone's story, whose story is it? Is it theirs or is it yours? And you're you're making the film and it's your film, but there has to be that like that sort of sliver of overlap where it's not just yours to go and take. So you have to have a, a, a kind of respect. You have to have boundaries also. You know, and so there's that like there has to be there have to be clear boundaries, and then there also has to be some flow of, of understanding that this is someone else's story, this is someone else's life, this is someone else's you know image, and and they're trusting you with that. And so I you know I think we asked ourselves like on a number of occasions you know like what is the third way if it's not mine exclusively and it's not theirs exclusively, what is the middle path of sort of mutual respect and understanding? And, and, you know, so for example, Ina May, you know, she signed all of her release forms. She didn't have cut over the film or, you know, whatever. Some filmmakers, you know, show the film to them when the film is over. Here's the film. You know, um, I, I remember talking to um, the filmmaker RJ Cutler about that. And he said, well, you know, taking your, your film to the person who made it and showing it to them as as challenging as that might be or as scary as that might be is like the price you pay for that intimate access is like going and screening the film for them and looking them in the eyes and I, I loved hearing that from him um, you know and that's what we did with Ina May we flew her out we took her in the film wasn't totally done yet so that so that there was that that there was that space there where if she said something and it made sense to us there was space for us to work with what her feedback was, to, to be able to take it in. Not that we were going to necessarily change it. And, and in but the end, listen. yeah, but to listen and to create to that space. Yeah. Because I think you have, you have to, that's like the only way to truly honor like what's, what's the truth about the situation. You know, it's not mine, it's not ours and it's not hers, but it's somewhere in between. Um, and so, you know, the only thing she asked us, to change was um, our the first title card that talked about the farm in the film referred to the farm as a commune, 
Um, and she said, you know, we really never used that word. We never wanted to be called a commune. We always thought of ourselves as an intentional community. And we were like, okay. That was her only note. Yeah. We were like, okay, <laughs> we could change that. So that, I mean, that was a surprise for us. And a relief in a mm -hmm. way that we had made a film that she felt comfortable with and that she felt rep that she was represented in a way that she wanted to be. And that also we touched on things that she felt were very important and she wanted out there. She wanted us to, sh she didn't say she wanted us to show a breech birth, but that's something that she wants to educate people about because she doesn't understand why it's not in medical textbooks anymore because all breech births basically are c-sections now and she feels like it's you know this loss of skills and why wouldn't they teach people how to you know doctors how to deliver breech babies so we had heard her talk about this over and over we knew that was something that was really important for her so we included it you know we in spending all this time together, we knew what she felt so passionate about and that... So we, we really touched on all those things, I think, and she felt satisfied about by that. But uh, it's, you know, it's very tricky. It's... I think that we had a lot of respect for the people that we were filming and... We, and we love them. I mean, yeah. we really have loved our experience with them, we have just have so much love and appreciation for the work that they did. It would be very difficult for me, and I don't, I'm not gonna speak for you, but I know you well enough to say probably for you too, to, to go and make a film about people that we did not like. To go and spend three or four years in like darkness, I think would be very difficult. Or to have the film come out and have them feel uneasy about it. You know, like, it's very sweet because they, I mean, there might be moments that they're not thrilled about. I haven't heard about that. I don't know. But they really support the film. And that only helps the film. That Ina May feels good about the film. She comes out with us and she's, you know, does Q&As and is a part of the whole process. It's her film. So. It is It is interesting because you, you, it's not like... You, you have to be willing to, to do things that, that the subject of the film may not like. You know, you can't just make it all rosy-rosy all the time. Um, but, but you have to balance that with, like, what is the, what is the reason why you're, why you're doing that? You know, I think that, like, people, people can tend to, to may, maybe make something sensational for the fact of the sensational aspects of things and we just we felt like we just it wasn't going to serve ultimately the the project to, to take it in that direction i mean it was a commune you know like there was some there was some Stuff it was an intent it was an intentional community yeah you know there were there were like any number of avenues that we could have taken the film down but we also felt like first of all everybody knows that story of like you know the 70s and what you know yeah. what what worked and what didn't work and why go, why why harass everybody with that, you and, know? And it would take away from all the good work that these women have done for 40 years. And why just to put in something that people might think was, you know, loony from the 70s. Why would we do that? Just it would discredit all this amazing work that they've done. So, I mean, there there wasn't really very much, but I don't know. There you know, we were, we were just like full of respect for these women and feel very lucky that they let us into their lives. So, I don't know, maybe on a different project it would be very different. On this yeah. project, it wasn't an issue. It was like, we there was a mutual respect and, um, you know, people don't know what goes into, make a, into making a film and that that's so interesting. I can't imagine what it's like to be on the other side and not know what you know all the facets of what go into it because it would be so unknown and it could create some anxiety of like what what is what this are they going doing? to be? Oh yeah. no, they just saw my closet. It's so messy. Or you know, I mean that's a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, but uh, I can imagine it would be really unsettling. And I don't, I don't like to be necessarily filmed for that reason because I know when you're sitting in an edit room that 
you know that person better than they almost know themselves when you're watching them on film. It's bizarre. You get to know them in this, such an intimate way. So um, anyway, it's, it's, it's a very a good question and it I don't have a, a perfect answer. It's more just something that I think we try to be quiet, we try to listen, we try to not overstep, we try to let things go on as they would have had we not been there. Um, inevitably with the camera around, that's impossible. No matter if, you know. But with Ina May, a little bit, it was okay because she is quite comfortable with the camera. We also let them in on the process as, as when, when it was appropriate. You know, here's what we're doing. Here's what we're thinking about for distribution. Here's yeah. like all this stuff. So they did, they didn't feel like we were just like running off. You know, there were times where we were like, oh, we need to. Well, we're gonna call them up and explain. Like here, here's where we are in this particular phase. This is what's happening. This is what we're. You know, this is what's coming up. You know, we we've tried to do that. Being in one interview and um, this person started to get upset and. And uh, Sarah was interviewing her and I was, you know, doing the camera, which is kind of a nice little barrier sometimes. And, and it was quiet and the woman was starting to cry and, and Sarah just let it sit there. And she was like, you know, after a couple minutes, like, this seems really hard for you. And it was so intense, mm -hmm. but having the courage to let the emotions sit there without jumping on them and saying, God, oh, I'm sorry, you upset, you need a tissue, whatever, but just like letting them sit in the room and letting them flow out. And then finally, like it felt like an hour later, Sarah was like this seems really hard for you and she was like this is really hard for me and then she started talking you know like it was like acknowledging okay, where she was and not saying oh we'll turn the camera off for you okay but just like sitting there and letting it happen yeah I it was very powerful I have a friend um, who who said she counts to 30 like when one of when something awkward or challenging or you've asked it and and you've asked a question and and they've said something but you know it's not right there that she's just like mm, an inner mind one two 30 is a long time i think i tried to do like 10 you know but but that that impulse to like fix it, make it all better, do away with the awkwardness like you, like that's you're there to catch real life and real moments and so like you have to be willing to provoke a little bit um and also hold just hold the space for what for the real emotion it's a it's a very risky proposition to make a film about somebody and it's very risky to be in a film that someone is making about you and that you as filmmakers and as subjects of films you share that risk whether you, you, they know it or you know it. Like I think it's it's so important for for especially as filmmakers to be mindful of the risk that the people who are in your film are taking by being in your film. And then I don't know how to how to convey always to the subjects that you're taking a risk as well. But you are. You're taking a huge financial risk. You're taking a huge personal you know personal creative psychological risk and and you throw your life into it and and so it's I think it's really helpful to try to have those conversations where you say like I know this might feel difficult and then in fact I think I would the next one if there ever is a next one I would probably have even more language to 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 bring to bear on the situation at the very outset like this is risky for us as filmmakers, here's why, and this is risky for you as a, as a subject, and here's why, and, and, but we can, we can agree to move forward, and this is, this, these are the safety things we're gonna have in place. 
I yeah. feel like the filmmakers know a lot more than the people <laughs> about that part of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, about like that part of it. Like, they have no idea. Well, and they don't know what, what you're risking as a filmmaker. N no. Right? And all. that's what... And, and our intention was always, you know, a positive one. You know, with Ina May, there was never... You know, we, we, we just wanted to tell her story. But still, it's like really intimate moments. Mm -hmm. What about certain points, and, and you don't really have to give me any specifics, but where you knew that let's just walk away from this in terms of not a film, but like a certain segment where you knew this is just not going to work and I don't want to press them anymore. Was but it that counting have, to three? Did we have that that you remember? Mm -hmm. Just a couple of things. So but we figured out ways to deal with it in the edit room, but then we didn't include it. So that's another thing is not realizing all the tools you have at the moment when you're shooting. You're like trying to get at a certain subject, whatever it is, and then realizing maybe later you could piece it together, you know, um, somehow in the edit room. But yeah, we, there were a couple things that we really wanted one person to talk about and we couldn't get it and we tried a number of ways and so we just put up our hands and mm -hmm. sort of moved on and I think that that's I think that you have to persevere you have to try more than once but if it's not happening it's not happening you know like how what are you supposed to do you can't <laughs> rob anybody of anything yeah and, and you want to preserve sort of the integrity of the film and also yeah. keep that trust there, I'm sure, too, because if they feel you're pushing too much, maybe they won't. Yeah, and they didn't want to talk about it. And you just let it be? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Count to 30. Or... That's <laughs> yeah. a great rule. I like that. It's a good rule. It's a handy tool to have in your, in your filmmaker toolbox, for sure. For sure.